Okay, my name is Nathan Peel. I'm going to be talking about accessory cardiac conduction pathways and their associated disorders. To understand cardiac conduction dysfunction, it's really important to understand how the conduction system works in a healthy heart, starting with the heart's pacemaker at the SA node, propagating through the atria causing contraction, and then through the AV node and the bundles of Hiss causing ventricular contraction subsequent to that. It gives us this offset contraction that we're so used to in our typical heartbeat. The pacemaking of the heart, yes, happens at the SA node, but there's also downstream pacemaking that happens at the AV node and the bundle of Hiss and in the ventricles. And what these are essentially backup systems that if for whatever reason, say you're in complete heart block, the SA node's signals are not getting to the ventricles. The ventricles have their own intrinsic rhythm of about 30 to 40 beats per minute that do cause them to beat and contract. And this will keep you alive even if uh, your heart's not fully conducting properly. A lot of these common cardiac disorders aren't really conduction disorders that we think about. Something like myocardial infarction, you see the ECG there on the right. Or like valve disease, if you're, you know, have a grandparent that had a valve replacement, these really aren't disorders of the conduction system. What we're interested in are really how the electrical condition, conditions can be changing inside the heart, causing things like atrial fibrillation, which is pretty benign and pretty common, or something much more serious like torsade de point, which is a very, very serious condition that can very quickly kill you. These accessory pathways that we're talking about, the reason we're interested in them is not necessarily because of their immediate dangers, but a lot of the long-term things that can happen like cardiomyopathies and congestive heart failure as long-term effects of the extra strain these conditions put on your heart. The way that they work is by utilizing naturally occurring secondary bands of conductive tissue that people that are afflicted with these conditions are simply born with, and they can t locate in a couple of places in the heart. Often you'll see them in the cardiac wall between the atria and the ventricles, and you'll also see a circular one around the AV node, and they cause a couple of different uh, conditions that we'll talk about here. Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome is the most common of these conditions. It's the result of that cardiac wall pathway here called the bundle of Kent. It's really interesting because it conducts in both the anterograde and retrograde directions. And as you see in uh, pictures A and C there, um, it can really cause a very quick uh, circle of electrical activity in the heart that essentially bypasses the SA node and causes very rapid heartbeats and can cause sort of a dyssynchrony between the ventricles and the atria, particularly the left ventricle as it strains to pump enough blood out to your heart in that rapid heart rate. Atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, or AVNRT, is this pathway around the AV node that forms a very small little circle and allows electrical conduction to travel very quickly in this little circuit around the AV node. And what happens is that as it does that, it sends a signal down every time it goes around that circle down into the ventricles and causes the ventricles to contract really quickly at a different rhythm than the atria. Often this ends up with the ventricles contracting prematurely, and so they have not fully filled up with blood. The atria are still contracting, squeezing all the blood out of it. And so it has to work a lot harder to pump enough blood out to the systemic circuit. When we have these conditions, we're really looking at a lot of long-term issues. Yes, you can fall into ventricular fibrillation, this uncontrolled quivering of the ventricles, and that is very dangerous. But a lot of the issues we're looking at are hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or left ventricle hypertrophy, this unusual thickening of the heart wall that happens as hearts age under this extra strain from having these interesting conduction patterns happening. If you are diagnosed with something like uh, one of these two conditions, there's only a few things that we can do. Often people will go on medication to help slow their heart rate down, beta blockers and calcium channel blockers. Or in very serious cases, the only permanent fix we have is catheter ablation, where a catheter is fed up your artery into your heart, and that extra connective band is really just burned away with uh, a, an electrode on the end of a catheter. However, because so many patients are asymptomatic, often people choose simply observation where they will work with their cardiologist to make sure that nothing is happening to really impact their life today. The problem with that is we know that often these problems aren't really issues today, but can be down the line. And as we've become better at our monitoring techniques, our detection, and have a better understanding of how these pathways actually occur and where they are, we've become a lot better at treating them. 
this catheter ablation is really minimally invasive and it's become so fast and so safe that it's become very easy to piggyback it onto other heart procedures or to recommend it to people that otherwise might not go under that procedure just because we can save them a lot of potential problems down the line. And that's really where the future of this treatment is going, is how do we use the better information that we have today to recommend better plans of action to patients with these conditions, proactively treat their conditions, and then save them from having things that might go wrong with their heart farther down the line the longer that they live.